I don't even remember how we do this anymore, Andrew. How do we uh, how do we intro into these things? Well, <laughs> welcome back to the, the keys of the castle. The, 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 uh. <laughs> welcome back to the keys of the castle podcast, where we talk about whatever we find interesting this week in the world of real estate. Oh, I'm Andrew Stagler. This is Adam Fife, and today we're going to talk about is anything changing? It seems like it's a different year. Interest rates are higher, but it is the same problems, the mm. same activity that we're seeing in the market. A little bit uh different um input from mm -hmm. buyers and sellers mm -hmm. than uh, i think would have expected this time last year but virtually nothing's nothing's changed from mm -hmm. our on the street point of view here in calgary would would you agree with that i guess so i would totally i would totally agree I, would with that. I would actually almost argue and it could just be my own business speeding up but i would argue that this january was busier than last january yeah but that could also just be personally but I'm seeing a lot of movement. Like I'm still seeing, you know, even apartments going up and going pending within three, four days and just all sorts of goodness. Everything under like 600,000 is just absolutely flying. It, yeah, it's just a question of affordability and mm -hmm. then what's on the market. Mm -hmm. There's virtually nothing on the market. Absolutely. Um, there's no deals to be had. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, 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 or rather the deal is if, you, if you're um, looking for a deal as in you want some money off of asking price. Mm -hmm. I think what we're seeing a little bit differently than last year is that we're not seeing uh, sellers poise themselves for competing offers. So we're actually seeing sellers put up the, the property uh, very close to what it's actually worth. And so you can come in and uh, the price is quite easily supported by the comparables. Absolutely. Maybe a touch higher, but it's it's due to you know relatively nothing on the market in that particular area, especially if it's a desirable area of the city or surrounding the city. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I would say that's the only change. Competing offers, I've seen a handful of them. If they are going competing, it's only a couple of thousands uh, over. Um, but I, I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Walking into a house and there's, there's some honesty behind their pricing. Mm -hmm. They're looking to get a fair price for their house. Uh, but they don't, they're not looking for a, a little bit of a bidding war mm -hmm. when they put up their house on the market. Mm -hmm. um, how much of this is going to change, Adam, in the coming year? It seems like everybody's talking about interest rates decreasing. Uh, most banks are predicting this to happen uh, at the first meeting in April mm -hmm. and then uh, following consecutive meetings after that in May and June. I'm, I think it's going to get even tighter. I mean, uh, Calgary's positioned pretty well to con see continued growth right up until probably mid 2025 going into 2026. I think 2026 we'll probably see a stabilization with all this regulation changing and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But with uh, the Bank of Canada or some analysts assuming that mortgage interest rates are going to drop by like 0.5, 2%, Calgary's going to absolutely explode. I mean, look at all the people that are moving here. I think the closest thing that I'm going to be watching in 2024 is the unemployment rate. I want to see how high that gets. As I think we're at around six and a half right now, which is actually historically normal but with just the sheer amount of people moving here it'll be interesting to see if that gets up to like the eight or nine percent interest rate because then that would deter people from obviously buying real estate so that's an interesting point of view mm -hmm. in other provinces that we've seen incredibly high layoffs typically though it's in the trades it's and it's because of housing starts mm -hmm. slowing down mm -hmm. whether that be commercial or residential um but it seems like blue collar jobs are really the the ones most affected and in, in our housing starts I mean, it slowed down a little bit, but mm -hmm. not very much. No, that's it's just from demand. Absolutely. Uh, so it'd have to come from other areas of our, our provincial economy. Mm -hmm. um, you mentioned an interesting point around people moving here. I think you have some some stats around uh, Alberta, Alberta calling. Yeah, there, was a, there was an interesting <laughs> title that you sent me that Alberta isn't calling anymore because you're already all here. <laughs> that was from CBC. Yeah. Was, we'll link all these as well in the description. Yeah, <laughs> maybe you want to touch on that. Some some stats you have around. Um, I think it's mostly provincial immigration, isn't it? Uh, yeah, absolutely. It's it's been pretty crazy. I mean, I I don't remember the exact number for the amount of people that moved here uh, in 2023. I probably should have looked that up. But Alberta saw a net increase for 15 consecutive months. 15 months we saw an increase in population growth. And in Q3 of 2023, we don't have Q4 yet, but just in Q3, we had just over 17,000 people moving here, coupled with Q1 and Q2 as well. Like it's been crazy. The report was incredibly interesting as well because it, it specified that it wasn't from all provinces and, and actually it was a little bit from immigration, but it was mostly from provincial within Canada immigration. Mm -hmm. And it was almost entirely from provinces, uh, BC and Ontario. Yeah, BC saw a net loss of like 17,000 in Q3. 
Ontario is is just as bad. I'm, give me a moment here. I'm actually going to pull up a, a stat here from. I could I could support that. From what we saw last year, phone calls. It was it was a bit of a joke that we we ran. But if we saw an Ontario based area code, I would answer that pretty much immediately. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, and uh, it was almost entirely from BC and, and Ontario. Mm-hmm. Uh, a little bit more of an investor base, I would say, from BC um, than Ontario. Two previous years, like 2022, we were seeing more of an investment. Uh, buyer group coming here versus Ontario in 2023 or Ontario based buyers uh, we're actually looking to move mm-hmm. right here so it's an interesting mixture of uh, I guess what the stat doesn't touch on is how many people are actually investing in these spaces and are they actually moving here to invest in these spaces I've seen a lot of investors from Toronto a lot of first time home like investors mm-hmm. that reach out to me just looking for basic information a lot of tire kickers but there has been some gnarly marketing from um, new home development agents who have connections in Ontario and really push that. A lot of those new homes that come up on the market from my personal experience have been like Toronto, like uh, buyers and investors, like they own it. It's been crazy to, to witness. Yeah, I would tend to agree with you on that. Mm-hmm. Um, Sorry, I'm just trying to figure out. I want to find the stat. I should have looked at it before. But there was a lot, a lot of people that moved here from uh, Ontario. And I'm going to post this up if I can find it faster. But uh, a lot of people came here from uh, the Ontario province. So coming back to the uh, the conversation about what's going to happen next year, um, a uh, post by the Financial Post as well as TD Bank, uh, predictions are that, that interest rates are going to come down Mm. Uh, 1.5 to 2 percent mm-hmm. um, by June of 2024. So affordability, there will be a mild difference in affordability. I think from general demand in Calgary, I would say that this it would be fairly mild and and likely very short lived. Um, the affordability from that. So the interest rates are going to come down. Your monthly payments are going to come down, but prices are going to rise. Yeah, absolutely. More people are going to enter into the space. The affordability benchmark, maybe it's sitting, you mentioned anything under 600,000 is essentially going. As soon as we get down to an interest rate that's below 5%, mm-hmm. it's going to open up the door maybe to 550. Mm-hmm. Is it 700 now? Um, it, I, I think that's the direction that it's going to go. Now, maybe not across all property types. I would say that people maybe with the pricing uh, decrease and the availability of homes from the six to 700 range, detached homes will be, once again become much, much more popular mm-hmm. in that space. Uh, townhouses for sure. Do you think that it will affect anything around vacancies, rental vacancies? Absolutely. Uh, vacancies are at like 2% right now, just uh, hovering over 2%. So I would argue that a lot of those people that are in those as well definitely want to get into the housing market. So not only are we getting more migration coming here in 2024, but a lot of people moved here and they're stuck in the rental market because of the lack of inventory. They probably went on a 12-month lease agreement. That's going to come up sometime in 2024. I think it's going to be... A, just another wild year i'm I'm pretty confident it's just gonna we're gonna see a lot of percentage increases i would i would argue that the townhouse market is probably going to see another 10 to 11 to 12 percent increase year over year mm-hmm. i would actually say townhouse flips in 2023 or 2024 are probably going to be a pretty good uh investment for people to soak them up in q1 q2 that's such an interesting point because we were we were actually talking in regards to a client earlier this week uh, around a foreclosure property mm-hmm. uh, that someone had built some townhouses and wanted to hang on to them and, and rent them out, which they, they went under. And lately, in the, in the last couple of years, we haven't seen many residential foreclosures that, that make it to the market. Um, what's really interesting, I think, ha- that's happening right now is that we are seeing a couple more. I wouldn't say it's a substantial amount more, mm-hmm. but they're well supported by the market. There's enough to Absolutely. That they're, they're taken off pretty much immediately. Mm-hmm. And the prices that they're selling for are comparable to actual values as if they were to go and sell them themselves in the open market uh, prior to foreclosure. So banks are doing really, really well. And there's there's enough demand to support those foreclosures. I think a little bit unlike what we're seeing, um, or rather what I'm hearing from uh, specifically BC and a little bit from Ontario, but mm-hmm. specifically BC, prices are reduced uh, and possibly it's around foreclosures. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, we saw that one foreclosure in Riverbend, I think it was like 680, 690, which I thought was pretty fair. Looking at comparables, you're looking at around 780 to 800. So mm-hmm. the, this is pretty close really for a foreclosure property um, at the end of the day. Like they're not trying to just fire sale it. Like they're trying to actually be a little bit more competitive. I could see that thing selling over seven easily. 
Oh yeah, for sure. Mid sevens yeah. at least. And even at mid sevens, it's a deal. For a foreclosure property too. It's fairly uncommon, right? I mean, look at, you know, 2016, 2019, how many foreclosures were there were and you know, how cheap they were. And mm -hmm. nowadays it's just, they're flying off the shelf. We're dealing with uh, a couple of people that are looking for the deals and the deals just aren't, aren't there. Right. If you look at some of the older product that's been on the market for 90 plus days, or maybe they've even terminated and you want to go try and find something off market, there's a p potential there, but people are smart. Like they, they see the market's hot and they're just not really flexing too much. So if you could target a property type, it's, it's an interesting conversation. I, I would say that there are deals to be had, but it's likely not money's off of list price. So if there's a, a sweet spot right now, mm -hmm. prior to interest rates reducing, if you were to get in, Right, we, we reflect on 20, uh, so when buying in 2020, mm -hmm. right, or 2021, mm -hmm. when the market dipped, and now they look like absolute rock stars because yeah. they got such a low interest rate and they bought at, at a price point, but also a property type that's highly desirable right now. Mm -hmm. Is that going to happen again? And in what price point or property type would you say that's going to happen? I would say the half duplex market and the townhouse market are probably the two. And, and I would say probably around like 400 to 450, like a pretty 350 to 450, I would say. But, but it's probably going to pop off. Even those older townhouses, or sorry, those half duplexes that they're still the free, fee simple. Um, you know, you own the land, you own the lot. Like those are going to be targeted pretty heavily, I'd imagine. They're going to fly pretty quick. That's such an interesting point of view. I think in a traditional market, you'd, you'd always say, if you can go down 25% from uh, general, so we split Calgary into quadrants, mm -hmm. north, uh, northwest, southwest, et cetera, et cetera. Right. Uh, and if you can find a quadrant and go 25% below market value and find a fixer upper home, I think you would still do pretty well with that. Mm -hmm. But Calgary is a, a bit of a different market that it's uh, small time builders and renovators or renovation companies that want to be builders mm -hmm. are actually picking up these homes. And instead of renovating them in a lot of cases, if they're more centralized, they're splitting them into two two titles, usually in yeah, your unit or enough. a duplex yeah. rather than, you know, renovating them like we've seen in the past. So individuals that uh, maybe you're a first time home buyer and you're looking at uh, kind of a beat up property you want to put a little bit of work into it yourself and get some sweat equity from it um the appreciation in that neighborhood is probably actually going to come from these infill guys rather than what what you're doing to the home itself and absolutely knows for someone else to live in that's fair so buying property let's say you're in the northwest at 450 and putting 50 grand into it and trying to get appraised out at 600 mm -hmm. you're probably more reliant on the new infills coming into that area areas like capitol hill and tuxedo park absolutely and then you so i think that there's an interesting conversation that's for another day is the rcg right like there's probably a lot of developers that are holding on to properties right now waiting for the city to have that final approval after the mm -hmm. public hearings to get that uh, blanket rezoning done because yeah. once that blanket rezoning is done there's going to be so many applications for 16 plexes 24 plexes all in these lots that have not been able to been be touched so i think right now we're going to see a little bit of a lull but then right when that q2 in terms of this specific conversation we're going to see a pretty wild increase in price and a lot of development in those older communities that have like multiple units in one lot do you feel like in Calgary's history, we flip flop northwest to southwest, northwest to southwest mm -hmm. as far as desirable infill yeah. and, uh, and renovation areas? And so for the last couple of years, the yeah. southwest has just absolutely been on fire. Mm -hmm. uh, we see a little bit in neighborhoods like Hawkwood and Edge, Edgemont. Um, do you feel like the the older neighborhoods that still have the, the 5,000, 6,000 square foot lots mm -hmm. in the northwest are going to be next? Something with mountain views, possibly back in the parks. Usually, they're wider streets, great, uh, great walking trails, mm -hmm. tons of schools in those areas. Mm -hmm. They just don't really build new neighborhoods like this anymore. Yeah, we're looking at like the thirty-five by hundred zero lot lines, right? And now, in this case, you actually have a sizable yard, something you could quite easily put a duplex on. Mm -hmm. Are we primed to do that? That switch once again moving into the new product into the northwest spaces mm -hmm. um, just because land has become so so expensive and will this i'm going to add another question to this before i let you <laughs> answer it well my gut feeling i'll preface this my gut feeling by this resorting to four unit um a lot the allowance of four titles on a single residential lot mm -hmm. i think all that's going to do is increase the land value mm -hmm. I, I don't i don't think oh, it'll actually this serve any purpose towards making product more affordable so those that would really benefit from those are going to be the builders that are going to be hanging on to it. Mm -hmm. The people that actually sell the land, probably not sell the end product, mm -hmm. right? And so because land is less expensive mm -hmm. marginally on the Northwest, will we see a flip from that as well? Interesting. Yeah, I think that the people, I totally agree with that statement. The developers are definitely going to reap most of the benefit because I'd imagine a lot of these developers are going to more or less sell luxury product, mm -hmm. right? So you're you're kind of tapping out of that affordability 
you're going to have more supply in the luxury space, which if you actually look at things priced above 650 ish, like there is actually a fairly balanced market for the most part, depending on what property type you're looking at. Um, so yeah, it's, it's an interesting conversation to talk on the first question there. I would say Thorncliffe, Beddington and Huntington are, are posed for some massive changes just because they have a lot of older lots. There's a lot of not very nice looking homes that as soon as this RCG goes in, I'm pretty confident that you're going to see a lot of development in that area. That's yeah. That, I would tend to agree with you also based on property type. Mm -hmm. I, I would probably also add in Tuscany and Rocky Ridge. You think, hey? I think so. Yeah. I, th they're so expensive already though. It would be the mountain views. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. I yeah. I didn't, that's fair enough. I, because I just pictured them like the lots aren't, aren't that big, but they're not that small either. And they're already like six, 50 for a half decent lot but you know four minute drive from there you have watermark right mm -hmm. fair enough minimum price of watermark is 1.7 yeah true 4.4 4. yeah that's right. fair um i i think what would be hmm. really difficult in those particular neighborhoods and some we've already seen this somewhat in areas that are just beautiful like varsity or mm -hmm. off renovating mm -hmm. is uh really the, the streets are very dendratic mm -hmm. uh, but also the lot sizes are pretty peculiar as well so mm -hmm. tearing up that front end drive that was built you know specifically for that lot fair it, it would be very difficult for an architect to go and lay out you know a four unit or a six unit uh, townhouse project mm -hmm. versus something like huntington or in certain cases in beddington um it's like the classic new west you know new home that's mm -hmm. basically a box that you can you can tear out on a rectangle lot mm -hmm. Yeah, that's fair. I I would almost say instead of the hunting or sorry, instead of the Tuscany Tuscany Rocky View, I'd probably look more or less like at Cedar Bray, down mm -hmm. deep south. Which now that the new highway's been built, they yeah. still get some pretty good mountain views depending on where you're at within those communities, and they still have some nice topography, huge lots, older homes built in like 60s, 70s. Some of them are probably falling apart. So, uh, it might selfishly, I would say that I I won. And now they brought up Cedar Bray. I was thinking about Somerset, and uh, and then I was thinking about the train expansion. So I guess mm. I'll, I'll lean that. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll lead you with what my yeah. train of thought was going. Yeah. Selfishly, I'd like to see if we're going to do these uh, four unit per residential lot, or ideally someone with a, a, a land amalgamation, mm -hmm. uh, do multifamily in and around the train. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Mill like, rise would be great. I'd like to see you know private investors make a little bit more sense of the city. That's true. Because that's always that's yeah valid point. Calgary was built by private investments, and so mm -hmm. they need to lead. It. And so if we can see higher density around the proposed train, I think the likelihood of the train actually moving forward mm -hmm. um, would make a lot of sense. Absolutely. Um, more dependency on the train and, and people actually using it would be ideal as well. That's actually a really valid point because Somerset is pretty inexpensive compared to other um lots in the city and i like it's not my first choice of a place that i would want to be but it's not bad it's not bad at all i think as a rental holding though i mm. mean i guess it would be the conversation of who's actually going to build them too right like if you're going to build four units on a property you're going to sell them as a rental as a whole and and one owner is going to own all four titles to so the eventual sell it off mm -hmm. is it going to be small time investors or are they actually going to live in these spaces mm -hmm. right the the four units if you were to apply the four unit uh, to something like uh, West Hillhurst, right, or Summer or uh, Sunnyside, I, I would more likely see people actually living in those units and mm -hmm. choosing a smaller uh, floor plan uh, to live closer to the, the amenities there. But something like Summer Somerset, um, I, I would I would see them probably as just being a rental community. Yeah, absolutely. That's or, around. You're right near based. everything. Yeah, yeah exactly. It's, you, you don't even you can make the argument you don't even necessarily need a car, or mm -hmm. if you were going to try to make a, a run at Calgary without a car, that would be one of the better areas to look at. Valid. So let's let's kind of switch it up here then. So this this whole video is about 2024. We're going to look back at this and, and maybe laugh, maybe not. <laughs> but um, what's kind of your thought process? So 2024 interest rates almost guaranteed to drop. Calgary almost guaranteed to see an increase in price. Um, you know, what are your thought process? Maybe some of the pieces of advice that you would give like buyers, sellers, investors, like kind of where's your head at for 2024? Uh, I would, um, I would choose a property that at today's interest rate, you're pretty comfortable, uh, holding because I don't think we're going to see a, a reduction in price until at least April. Uh, that said, I, I think that the individuals that are going to buy detached, semi-detached or townhouse properties prior to April are going to see my soft prediction is at least a 10% rise this year. Okay. I think that's a, a bold statement, but that's just generally how I feel with, mm -hmm. with demand. Okay. Um, I, I think we, we might see a bit of a softening on the peripheries. So areas like Sky Ranch, um, 
I think a lot of that demand is from outside of Calgary, mm-hmm. and, and we've seen a little bit more of a centralization of the city. Mm-hmm. So I, I, w- I would also say that I think that uh, price leaders are still going to be the centralized part of the city. Mm-hmm. And I see condos around the universities uh, to rise in 2024. Mm-hmm. I think when, when parents and other people start looking at a province, I, a lot of the renters that I've spoken to that want to get into the housing market here, they actually came for employment, not education. Mm-hmm. So U of T and UBC are still, you know, McGill are still top choices for individuals to go True. and rent out around the city. However, I've seen more and more people consider U of C and Mount Royal mm-hmm. as, as an option that are from out of province. Absolutely. So I think rental units in and around the universities are going to rise. I would like to touch on that as well, because I'm actually working with someone right now who's looking at some properties in the Gal Morgan area. And there's still some really nice apartments, like one and ones for 210, 215. Oh, yeah. So when you start to think about, okay, well, even just in Ontario, not Toronto, but like Ontario, 210 for an apartment is pretty damn good, oh, even yeah. for an investor. Like that's 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 pretty rock solid. So I can see that. I, I agree with that completely. We were uh, we were picking up um, a different investor who's picking up uh, near UFC and Brentwood, mm-hmm. uh, two bedroom units, uh, and we we're we we're high two hundreds. Mm-hmm. Uh, but he's renting them out for it, it's like ballpark and be like fifteen hundred a bedroom mm-hmm. at this point. One of the bedrooms doesn't even have a window. I think it's what was supposed to be more of an office. <laughs> yeah, Dan. Yeah. yeah, but it's just two separate students. So he's clearing three three grand uh, gross a mm-hmm. month out of something that he paid two seventy. Mm-hmm. Uh, flat price prior to putting the mortgage on mm. right so he put 50 grand down essentially right um i i just think that's that's super super low it's a 900 square foot unit it's right near all the amenities the mm-hmm. students don't need a car they can walk right across the street and jump the train go to ufc yeah um so yeah i, t- I tend to agree with you around the universities there's some hot deals absolutely yeah. uh especially with the university district seeing as much renovations as they had it's, it's nice to see like all that development. Yeah, yeah. I, I haven't spent a lot of time there, but yeah, it looks amazing. Well, that's a great point as well. Like in the university district, you're looking for a standard two bedroom. It's it's pushing like mid 500s at this Absolutely. point. Absolutely. Stick frame building, right? Yes, yeah, uh, true. You can get a yeah. nice concrete frame building that, you know, pretty comparable uh, size per square foot. Mm-hmm. Varsity. Uh, and uh, yeah, yeah, either Varsity or Brentwood. So mm-hmm. I'd say those like... 20 year younger buildings are, are probably set for a nice climb in 2024. I got a question for you. This is kind of a, just a thought process that I've had. Who do you think is going to benefit the most? And think about this. Who do you think is going to benefit the most in 2024? Sellers, developers, or investors? And when I say investors, I just mean someone who's buying holding. In, investors, as like far a, as just rent. like a long term renter. Long term renter. Yeah. That's, uh, That's a good question. I. Um, I would say the, I would say developers, and my person. I think sellers are obviously going to win uh, because prices are going to increase and there, there's lack of inventory. But I'm pretty sure with the the zoning changes, the developers are going to do quite well this year. I'm very confident there's a lot of developers that are just holding on until that news yeah. is released, and then they're going to you're going to see a lot of construction in Calgary. I would throw a wrench in it. I would say first time home buyers. What? Yeah. You think they're going to be the biggest beneficiary of 2024? That's a left field. Answer. If you were to come in in the first two quarters, I think so. Yeah. I, I think if you're given an opportunity to get in in the first two quarters, yeah. I, I would say so. Yeah. Um, individuals that are selling this year, I think it's going to be a, a case that, you know, maybe you're upgrading your home, but it's kind of a buy, you know, sell high, buy high type situation. True. Developers, everything's priced in mm-hmm. for them, right? So when they're when they're buying the properties and, and Prices are evidently rising. They're going to pay more for the land. They're going to pay more for the materials. They're going to benefit possibly on labor costs, depending on what employment looks like, like you brought up. Yeah. Um, and then I, I'd say investors, I'm, I would say it's area specific. If, if you're, you're clever with your investments and you've positioned yourself in something that's, it's a well-saturated market, mm-hmm. the vacancy rates are going to stay low. Mm-hmm. My God, now everybody's pushed against me on this. Pretty much everyone. I find the likelihood at late 2024 early 2025 for vacancies to rise in downtown calgary i don't think we've done enough to interest people to stay in the core mm-hmm. um especially if they're not employed as far as entertainment transportation just general lifestyle interesting yeah um, i agree the, the the layout of downtown i don't think there's enough down there to keep them mm-hmm. and so with the amount of small investors in downtown calgary that can't support multiple months um without a tenant mm. i think prices will decrease if there's going to be an area of the city that it will it's going to be downtown calgary that's 
Yeah, that's so. fascinating. It's, it's crazy, actually. So just speaking about the downtown core here, the amount of investors that I've seen and heard of that have finally offloaded their product, bought it 2012 to 15 era, um, where prices were arguably higher than what they are now. The, mm -hmm. Our benchmark has increased since there, but there's still a lot of apartments that I've seen that are not quite at the price as what they were like 10 years ago. So I, I would have argued that the downtown core would have saw an even drasticer mm. increase in uh, in pricing because there was so many new listings. So many investors were like, "F it, I want out of this." Calgary's probably going to dip again. Blah 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 blah. If those investors didn't offload because of the when they purchase it, I would imagine our benchmark price would probably be like thirty k higher. I yeah, I I could probably agree with that. Um, it's just. Downtown Calgary is, uh, it follows a cycle, right? Mm. When, when vacancies drop uh, time and time again, 08, 2014, when I see that over half the downtown core residentially, not even plugging in the rental only buildings, mm -hmm. just what's on the market, mm -hmm. over half of them are not owner occupied. Mm. That signals to me that if vacancy rates drop, considering you know, when people are purchasing them right now yeah. and their current mortgage rate, mm -hmm. Things are pretty tight. Mm -hmm. And so carrying those as a small investor for multiple months without a tenant mm -hmm. uh, or dropping your price and taking a loss, which is what we've seen in Toronto and just, you know, banking on the, the gradual appreciation. I don't think the city's done enough to for people to desire to live in most areas downtown. We should totally, uh, an episode of 2024, just kind of pick apart downtown have the pros and cons and like the developments and like why people would leave why people would move there because i think yeah. that downtown calgary is pretty trash like it's it's not it's not horrible i think in the last three years it's dramatically improved yeah i mean it's, it's still not enough i'm not i'm not trying to shit on it by any means but i mean when you look at other places and even just canada like downtown calgary is like yeah yeah dude, i mean I, I think just coming on to price as well, right? So mm -hmm. there's there's another side of that coin. Individuals who are renting downtown, will they buy downtown right mm -hmm. now? I think some will because they've seen the appreciation of the unit that they've lived in. Mm -hmm. But I think that's likely a misinformed point of view. A, a huge contributor, I, I generally feel like I could probably find stats to support this on why condos in some cities are either matching or outpricing um, more periphery detached homes is the the overall expense load being smaller you have a smaller unit you get less stuff but mostly transportation supported that you often don't need a car yeah fair right i, yeah. I lived in toronto for a couple of years i lived in vancouver for like half a decade i didn't have a car mm -hmm. in any of those cities mm -hmm. i lived in calgary for three weeks bought a car <laughs> you know what i mean it was designed for cars but yeah i so, yeah, yeah I, I think the biggest hindrance on condo yeah. values this is for owner-occupied spaces point. is yeah. the necessity of this overhead. You have a car payment. Mm -hmm. That's going to hurt you when you're going to be going to be pre-approved, mm -hmm. when you're going to be pre-approved for a, a property. Mm -hmm. You have condo fees that are relatively high that aren't priced in to detached homes. Mm -hmm. The condo fees do cover certain aspects of the purchase mm -hmm. um, that you would already pay, like heating and whatnot, property taxes, sometimes insurance. Um yeah, I think that's valid. But yeah. the, the overall income against, yeah, your overhead costs mm -hmm. or condo, I, I think we're we're hitting that point, mm -hmm. you know, and five hundred, six hundred thousand dollars condo, you have two cars, often you only have one parking spot, is awkward. Yeah. 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 That's that's actually a really good thought process, Andrew. I, I kinda like where you're at there. Um, so let's kind of wrap it up a little bit. So obviously we, we covered a few things. This is, we kind of just sent this podcast on a whim here. Uh, we just wanted to kind of share some thoughts about what we believe 2024 is going to look like. I personally think it's pretty obvious, but, um, in, who knows what's going to happen? I mean, there's could be a lot of things that change in the next couple of quarters that hinders growth. And, uh, we don't really know exactly what that could look like, but pretty, uh, pretty bullish on Calgary. I would, I would tend to agree with you, mm. bullish, with the exception of one area. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. the jury is out on that. So, yeah. It, it, yeah. Thank you so much for watching. Um, any questions, send it to our social medias or uh, just text Adam at... No, I'm just joking. <laughs> Thanks for watching. See you on the next one. Thank you.